They are two of the most popular members of the British royal family. As a nation, we have watched Princes William and Harry grow up. They were a solid unit as kids because no one could understand, apart from them, what they had been through. Get this on camera. Ah, you forgot your boots. <laughs> Their relationship is characterised by a deep brotherly bond. He is the one person on this earth we can talk about anything and give each other support. But they also share a competitive streak. Harry wanted to win. Oh my goodness, he wanted to win. And a unique royal rivalry. Did you just have a dig at the borders? <laughs> He's what, sorry? He's bored. He's pretty rich coming from a ginger. But now the boys have grown up, are they growing apart? As family, do you ever have disagreements about things? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Could recent report of a rift between the Duchesses of Cambridge and Sussex be hiding a private feud between the princes? The girls weren't as close as perhaps they might have been, but actually, the real issue wasn't between Meghan and Kate, it was between William and Harry. I never thought that those boys would ever fall out, but it seems to me there's been a seismic shift within the House of Wales. If true, what's behind the tension and fallouts? As I was told it by a number of sources, he went ballistic. Just two guys growing up and going their separate ways. They're going to have different ideas. The last thing you disagreed on, how do you resolve it? Is it resolved? <laughs> we don't know. Oh, okay. Things got actually so bad between them that there was a period of time when they actually weren't talking to each other. And what would a royal rift mean for the British monarchy? The future of the monarchy rests on the shoulders of William and Harry. If there actually was a real rift, it would cause severe embarrassment, it would cause no end of trouble. Look, I was christened in this. Mm. Looks remarkably well, despite it. It'll be hot inside. Ever since Prince Harry was born in 1984, the children of Prince Charles and Princess Diana have had a strong bond. When Harry was born, I think William embraced it. He loved his little brother. I remember him taking great pride in being there with his little brother and having someone to be with. Prince William led the way down the long corridors to the chapel. It was a lonely world before Harry came along. Prince Harry dozed, behaving impeccably. Harry really complimented the Wales household. Mother knelt on the carpet to show the baby to the children, but by now a tearful Prince Harry had had enough. Prince William, on the other hand, still had a fair amount of energy left. Those who looked after the young... Playtime in the Royal Nursery was always William in charge and, and Harry told what to do. Since the early days, William has always been the general and Harry the foot soldier. In their imaginations, the children were already off to a fire. Harry was a bit of a rebel when he was a little boy and um, would goad William on. William was always, I think, trying to be the good boy. He was always trying to be the one that would tell tales on his little brother. But, you know, Harry used to be quite a, quite a handful. They were always dressed up as paratroopers or in combat uniforms. They had great fun visiting the army and going on board Britannia. They loved all of that camaraderie with lots of people. They're very gregarious boys. You saw them always together and often together with their mum. They were obviously firm friends, but like all siblings, probably had their moments when they were firm enemies. Brothers fight, don't they, all the time. I think really might have been cross that Harry was freer than him and he could do a bit more what he liked and Harry was cross that William got privileges. In many ways, the prince's relationship as children was like other brothers across the country, but there was one crucial difference. Harry always knew that his brother was destined to be king. In fact, one day in the nursery, they had a huge row and William stamped his feet and said, I don't want to be king. And Harry said, well, if you don't do it, then do it instead of you. His mother thought that was very amusing. She said, that's a good idea, Harry. You make a great king. You know, she used to refer to Harry as GKH, Good King Harry, because she thought he'd be probably better equipped for the, the role in the future than William. William always got preferential treatment because he was the heir to the heir. And Diana made it always very clear that she wanted the two boys to be treated equally. While Princess Diana tried to make sure there was no preferential treatment between her boys, 
some say other members of the royal family were not always so sensitive. When they would go to see the Queen Mother at Clarence House, the best sandwiches and the chocolatiest biscuits were always kept aside and offered first to William. Harry would have to wait. And you know, Diana was aware of this, and I think that was why she always made a point of, of petting Harry, of just giving him that little bit of extra attention, because Harry knew that, that William was the number one son. But William and Harry's parents had difficulties of their own. By the time the boys were old enough to kind of get a feeling of what was going on, the household was pretty fraught between Charles and Diana. They would have heard raised voices. If they hadn't guessed, there were difficulties and Daddy was away alone. They are two of the most popular members of the British royal family. As a nation, we have watched Princes William and Harry grow up. They were a solid unit as kids because no one could understand, apart from them, what they had been through. Get this on camera. Ah! You forgot your boots. <laughs> Their relationship is characterized by a deep brotherly bond. He is the one person on this earth we can talk about anything and give each other support. But they also share a competitive streak. Harry wanted to win. Oh my goodness, he wanted to win. And a unique royal rivalry. Did you just ever dig at his <laughs> it's, what, sorry? It's, 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 it's pretty rich coming from a ginger. But now the boys have grown up, are they growing apart? As family, do you ever have disagreements about things? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could recent report of a rift between the Duchesses of Cambridge and Sussex be hiding a private feud between the princes? The girls weren't as close as perhaps they might have been, but actually, the real issue wasn't between Meghan and Kate, it was between William and Harry. I never thought that those boys would ever fall out, but it seems to me there's been a seismic shift within the House of Wales. If true, what's behind the tension and fallouts? As I was told it by a number of sources, he went ballistic. Just two guys growing up and going their separate ways. They're going to have different ideas. The last thing you disagreed on, how do you resolve it? <laughs> Is it resolved? We don't know. Oh, Things got actually so bad between them that there was a period of time when they actually weren't talking to each other. And what would a royal rift mean for the British monarchy? The future of the monarchy rests on the shoulders of William and Harry. If there actually was a real rift, it would cause severe embarrassment, it would cause no end of trouble. Look how he's christened in this. Mm. Looks remarkably well, despite it. It'll be hot inside. Ever since Prince Harry was born in 1984, the children of Prince Charles and Princess Diana have had a strong bond. When Harry was born, I think William embraced it. He loved his little brother. I remember him taking great pride in being there with his little brother and having someone to be with. Prince William led the way down the long corridors to the chapel. It was a lonely world before Harry came along. Prince Harry dozed, behaving impeccably. Harry really complimented the Wales household. Mother knelt on the carpet to show the baby to the children, but by now a tearful Prince Harry had had enough. Prince William, on the other hand, still had a fair amount of energy left. Those who looked after the young... Playtime in the Royal Nursery was always William in charge and, and Harry told what to do. Since the early days, William has always been the general and Harry the foot soldier. In their imaginations, the children were already off to a fire. fire. Harry was a bit of a rebel when he was a little boy and um, would goad William on. William was always, I think, trying to be the good boy. He was always trying to be the one that would tell tales on his little brother. But, you know, Harry used to be quite a, quite a handful. They were always dressed up as paratroopers or in combat uniforms. They had great fun visiting the army and going on board Britannia. They loved all of that camaraderie with lots of people. They're very gregarious boys. You saw them always together and often together with their mum. They were obviously firm friends, but like all siblings, probably had their moments when they were firm enemies. Brothers fight, don't they, all the time. I think William might have been cross that Harry was freer than him and he could do a bit more what he liked, and Harry was cross that William got privileges. 
In many ways, the prince's relationship as children was like other brothers across the country, but there was one crucial difference. Harry always knew that his brother was destined to be king. In fact, one day in the nursery, they had a huge row, and William stamped his feet and said, I don't want to be king. And Harry said, well, if you don't do it, then do it instead of you. His mother thought that was very amusing. She said, that's a good idea, Harry. You make a great king. Yeah, she used to refer to Harry as GKH, Good King Harry, because she thought he'd be probably better equipped for the, the role in the future than William. William always got preferential treatment because he was the heir to the heir. And Diana made it always very clear that she wanted the two boys to be treated equally. While Princess Diana tried to make sure there was no preferential treatment between her boys, some say other members of the royal family were not always so sensitive. When they would go to see the Queen Mother at Clarence House, the best sandwiches and the chocolatiest biscuits were always kept aside and offered first to William. Harry would have to wait. And, you know, Diana was aware of this, and I think that was why she always made a point of, of petting Harry, of just giving him that little bit of extra attention, because Harry knew that, that William was the number one son. But William and Harry's parents had difficulties of their own. By the time the boys were old enough to kind of get a feeling of what was going on, the household was pretty fraught between Charles and Diana. They would have heard raised voices. If they hadn't guessed there were difficulties and Daddy was away a lot and then Mummy was not, they would have known that, they would have sensed that. Every effort was made particularly to protect Harry from the problems in his parents' marriage. William, obviously, being that much older, um, was more aware of, of the arguments. Harry and William were thrown together to protect each other and look out for each other. Certainly William, I think, felt very protective towards Harry. I saw the boys grow up and their bond was very tight. It was held together, of course, by the glue of their mother. Um, Diana never treated one different to the other. They were always the same. They were her boys. In 1997, disaster struck the Wales household when Princess Diana died in a car crash. William was 15 and Harry 12. The two princes whose heart can, cannot go out to those boys today? Who can avoid a choke in the throat at the sight of them? They, they began the week as boys, they've ended it as men. We've seen them almost visibly mature in front of our eyes. When the princess died, we as a nation watched their hearts break. And William and Harry were never the same again. Courage of these two boys. For everybody in the UK, those images are kind of burned on the national consciousness. One of the reasons that, that many people mourned Diana, apart from just the tragedy of her death itself, was that these boys were going to lose something huge in the, at a very important stage of their lives. The two princes bonded over the death of their mother, turning to each other for support. I think without any doubt that that would have brought the brothers together because they both understood. And also boys at that time, and probably still, embarrassed about showing emotion, but they could to one another. No one could understand, apart from them, what they had been through. They lost their mum at a very early age. It is our problem that we've expected them to stay that tight because, because they're, they're people, they're just people. And people change and relationships change depending on what's happening in your life. Diana's death left Charles with sole responsibility for the boys, something he felt keenly. Charles had to step up to the plate and become the sole parent whilst being an incredibly busy Prince of Wales with all of the royal duties to carry out. It must have been very, very difficult for Charles. He was painted as the bogeyman by, by the press. All the while, Charles was trying to be love and involved as much as possible. There's lots of footage of them, almost kind of the three of them against the world, that infamous piece of footage when they were skiing at Closters. Charles was mic'd up, and Nick Witchell from the BBC had the temerity to ask a perfectly innocuous question. And Charles said, oh, I can't stand that awful man. <laughs> 
No. I got better. So amazing. And the boys were kind of tittering in the background and obviously kind of supporting dad. Yeah. It was like them against the rest of the world. And that was fine. That's actually how it should be. That felt right to me. They were a, a, a proper unit. Very well. But the unit of three would split when William left home for a gap year, followed by university. And Harry was left to follow his own path, leading to reports of the prince's first feud. That was the first time the brothers really fell out. Harry refused to speak to his brother or forgive him for, for some time. Growing up, princes William and Harry were a tight unit. But when William went off to university, the dynamic changed. I think William was a very good influence on him. And for the first time, they were living in different places. That was a difficult time for Harry because his dad, of course, the Prince of Wales, is a bit of a workaholic and was doing all his duties as heir to the throne. William had gone away. And so Harry sort of had the run of Highgrove and was involved in oh, drinking too much. The brothers at that particular time were going in separate ways, and so William wasn't really there to sort of put his hand on his shoulder and say, are you going the wrong way here? You're not doing yourself any favours. At this point, there were fears William and Harry could fall into that old royal trap of the more sensible, stable heir to the throne and the wayward younger prince. Something many saw a generation earlier in the relationship between their father, Prince Charles, and his brother, Prince Andrew. The heir and the spare has always been a thing in, in the royal family. Harry liked to party, um, and there was a period where Harry was drinking. He was experimenting with drugs. You know, there was a point where he was a bad boy, and he was partying all the time. And everyone was going, my god, you know, this is, this is what happens to the spare. But behind the tabloid headlines, some say the coverage itself was causing tension between the brothers. Harry has obviously got into some scrapes which have landed him on the front pages uh, of the newspapers, but at plenty of those parties, particularly the teenage parties, William was there. Harry served as a really useful decoy. That was the first time the brothers really fell out because Harry resented the fact that he'd taken all the blame. But of course, William was the heir. Harry took the flag, and he was very cross about that. Um, he refused to speak to his brother or forgive... ..able to enjoy a relatively normal university life. He was very good looking, looked like his mum, had that amazing mop of blonde hair. All men wanted to be mates with him, all girls wanted to date him. And uh, yeah, he enjoyed himself. He had a good time. It was also at university that William would meet another big influence in his life, his future wife, Kate Middleton. That's another difference in their life, that from pretty early on, William was with one woman that he ended up marrying, and Harry wasn't. But how would Kate's arrival affect the brothers' relationship? Would William and Harry restore their close bond or drift further apart? I'm going to pay the bits. Get us on camera. Ah! He forgot his boots. Oh, my God. That's another classic. Here, you borrow my ones that Marcus got. That's just about the stupidest thing I could have done. By their late teens, early 20s, princes William and Harry had gone their separate ways with William finding love at university and Harry finding it difficult to stay out of the newspapers. The younger prince would ultimately find discipline and structure by fulfilling his childhood dream of joining the army. I think the army was really the making of Harry. He made it his thing and he was incredibly good at it. Going into the army was an escape. And of course, for the first time, he could just be Captain Wales. And I think he rather loved that, but he sort of needed that to, as it were, grow up and grow into who he wants to be. He became a hero overnight. I remember one documentary where he was talking to a reporter. Maps all over the place, digi maps. And, and suddenly they got the call to go somewhere, and, and off he went. And you think, oh, wow, he's actually kind of honest. William followed his younger brother into the military but their experiences would be very different. William was perceived as a future king and an officer, and Harry, as in childhood, was always perceived as a soldier. And so the two followed very different paths. While William always had a clearly defined future, Harry found his calling in the army. The younger prince had found his purpose. Harry, he created this world for himself. 
which was a lot more interesting and on many levels a lot more fun than William's dutiful work. When Harry came back from Afghanistan, the two brothers were reunited when they began helicopter training at the same time. They shared a house for six months and gave the odd interview to the press. In the interview, you get nice digs where Harry hands me. I think we've, we've established that from school, but when it comes to all that, I think hand, I'm much better hands on. Boldness, sorry. William has a go at uh, Harry for being ginger, and they're just nice little digs that happen in all families. Did you just have a dig at the boldness? <laughs> it's what, sorry? Boldness. 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 pretty rich coming from a ginger, so I'm quite happy to uh, um, take that on the In the royal family, there's always a banter about which service is the best. Service rivalry is there between you two? Not at all. No, not at all, really. I mean, everyone, oh, everyone knows the army. I'm an active cavalry boy anyway, so it's uh, it's fine. Wouldn't it's a good so. band between army pilots and the and our pilots, obviously, as well. And naval pilots, just you know, in the background, they didn't do anything, so it's fine. Uh, William at this stage is training to become a seeking uh, pilot for search and rescue. Harry is upgrading to Apache training. The helicopter course is a very strenuous course, but he's managed to get through it, so but, I reckon I can. Yeah. I just said something nice, you can say something nice. Uh, yeah, he's and, great. And it's the last time they lived together. They lived uh, together. We're in a, in a farmhouse. First and last time we'll be living together. Yeah. It's, it's, been, it's been a fairly emotional experience. So there is that kind of ribbing, jesting, that I think is a real kind of cornerstone of their relationship. Bear in mind, I cook him and feed him basically every day. I think he's, uh, he's done rather well. I told you the other week that he did all the washing up. He does do a bit of the washing up, then he leaves most of it in the sink, and then it comes back in the morning, and I have to wash it up. Oh, the lies. Yeah. He snores a lot as well. It keeps me out all night long. Not good I think we're showing a bed <laughs> so, No, I, don't, I think that's very important we say that. Well, William onto an admirable career as a search and rescue pilot, he was increasingly focused on royal duties and his home life. On the 29th of April 2011, he would marry his long-term girlfriend Kate Middleton in Westminster Abbey with his brother Harry by his side. All was well in the House of Wales. Harry was delighted to be best man, but then again, William couldn't really have asked anyone else, you know, he was always going to ask his brother and, and Harry did a sterling job. These two young men who are emerging obviously at this very, very special moment looking so great and so proud. I was actually at that wedding and I remember them walking towards the Abbey together and they were kind of laughing and talking earnestly and yeah, they were very close. We saw those two boys stood so proudly without their mother, stuck together like glue as that beautiful vision Kate walked down the aisle. It couldn't have been more Harry had known Kate for a number of years. Harry would joke about Kate's killer legs, and uh, in fact, he wanted to reference them in his best man speech, but he was told to take it out. He was delighted that his big bro was getting married. And I think the two brothers were very close at that stage. After the wedding, two turned into three. We forget how long they were a little threesome. We got used to seeing Kate and her two princes, really, and obviously got on very well. Kate was like Harry's big sister. You know, he had talked about you know, getting advice from her. She always kind of looked after him. The three of them spent a lot of time together, and they were always laughing, the three of them. <laughs> they were like this little close-knit trio. Those three did get on very well. They did a lot of engagements together. So Harry would even just about being the spare wheel when, you know, he did engagements with the three of them and he'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm slacking behind those two, you know, the lovebirds. And we know that Harry wanted his own wife to go and do engagements with and have a kind of a wingman, effectively. Harry saw the happiness his brother had and he wanted some of that too. As William, Harry and Kate grew closer, there was still a clear rivalry between the brothers. <laughs> Both boys are very competitive. I mean, there's, there's, there's lots and lots of footage of them playing football and shoving each other out the way, rugby, trying to rugby tackle each other to the ground. I remember seeing William, Harry and Kate doing a 100-metre race. Harry wanted to win. Oh, my goodness, he wanted to win. He didn't care about Kate. He just wanted to beat his brother, and he did. Harry's always been driven because he wanted to beat his brother, because his brother seemed to have 
the goals. He had all the accolades. And so Harry dug his feet in and wanted to be as good as his brother. But does Harry and William's relationship have echoes of the recent royal past? There's definitely similarities between Andrew and Charles's relationship and, and Harry and William's. As Charles was just three years old when his mother became queen, it was said she was able to have more time for her younger sons, sparking rumours of favouritism among royal observers. Yeah, there's a lot of talk that Andrew's the, the Queen's favourite, and perhaps that may be true. Her eyes light up when he enters the room, and I think that there's not the awkwardness that perhaps there was in the earlier days between the Prince of Wales and his parents. As Charles and Andrew grew up, some say their different characters became more apparent. Whoa! Oh, yes! Charles is more uh, reserved. Andrew is uh, more flamboyant. I think that's partly down to the weight of destiny on Charles's uh, shoulders, and uh, there's something you see in, in William as well. So, uh, yeah, the younger brother, the kid brother, gets more latitude to be themselves than, than the older brother does. Questions were even put to Prince Charles about his brother's reputation. <laughs> yeah, he was the playboy prince then. And 20 years later, it was his nephew, Harry. For Prince Harry, another big change was about to take place that would further test his relationship with his brother. In September 2017, he introduced his new girlfriend to the world. My goodness, Meghan changed all the dynamics when she came into the royal family. She really did shake the bag up. With Meghan and Harry now an item, the three musketeers would become the Fab Four. Catherine, Harry and I are delighted to be here this morning and we're particularly happy uh, to be in our first Royal Foundation event with Meghan. But how long would that relationship last? Some really, really serious stuff had to happen to break that asunder. For years, Prince Harry was one of the most eligible bachelors in the world. His love life under constant scrutiny. Oh, yeah. Harry didn't ever seemed to settle. I mean, he went out with Chelsea Davy, fantastically glamorous. Then he went out with Cressida Bonus, who was beautiful. And in both those girls, I think he had great relationships, but he was looking for something else. He'd seen his brother's relationship, which was very, very close, very happy. His brother had become a dad. Very special. And I think he was thinking, I like a bit of this, but first I've got to find the, the right woman. So Harry met Meghan in the summer of 2016. She's great, she's vibrant, she's fun, and Harry's over the moon. My goodness, Meghan changed all the dynamics when she came into the royal family. As a breath of fresh air, as a divorced woman, as an American, as a mixed race lady, she really did shake the bag up. Well, obviously, Meghan and Harry is a total love story. I mean, they met, and about 16 months later, they got engaged. Most of us would think, oh, yeah, that's a pretty good time. But, of course, in royal circles, that's a fairly short time. Prince William congratulated the newly engaged couple in typical brotherly fashion. Delighted for them both, wishing them all the happiness in this very exciting time. And for me personally, I hope it means he stays out of my f***. Um, it's not scrounging up on my food he's done over the last few years. But rumours were beginning to circulate in the press about William and Harry's relationship were the brothers as tight as people thought. The biggest cause of their so-called rift was Wills tried to walk less than a year when they got engaged. He sat him down and just told him to take it a bit slow, not to run at him. It was all so quick that William and Kate didn't have a moment to get to know Meghan because Harry hardly knew Meghan. And of course, quite naturally, William and Kate would have thought, no, she's been married before, she's older than Harry, I hope She's going to make him happy. Anyone would think that. As I was told it by a number of sources, he went ballistic and said, you're trying to wreck this relationship before it's even started. And that was the moment I was told by sources very close to the brothers that the dynamic changed, that there was a, a shift. And it was largely down to Harry resenting 
protecting his brother. Harry supported William from the outset of his relationship with Kate, and he felt very let down that he wasn't getting his brother's full 100% support with the relationship with Meghan. And things changed. In May 2018, Prince Harry married Meghan Markle in Windsor. Best man Prince William was by his side. Despite the rumours about the state of their relationship, there was no sign of any rift between the brothers on the big day itself. Harry and Meghan's wedding was just a picture-perfect day in Windsor. It was never going to be as big as William and Kate's at Westminster Abbey. He's not the heir, but it was a great occasion. When he realised that Harry and Meghan were going to get married, I think William did what he knew was the right thing to do, which was to throw himself behind it wholeheartedly. I mean, of course, he was Harry's best man. He organised the stag do the night before the wedding, and he was incredibly supportive, and you could see how happy he was. Who knows what he was thinking privately. They looked like their old selves on that day because he was making Harry laugh in the church and it was like just two brothers together. The only thing that marred it, of course, was the Markle debacle. Was her dad going to show up in this bizarre few days leading up to the wedding when he was effectively issuing press releases through a website in L.A.? William told friends when he married it was going to be for life. You know, having gone through a broken marriage, he never wanted to go through that himself. And I think Harry feels very much the same way. And, you know, Meghan, of course, also comes from a broken home. That's something that Harry and Meghan do have in common. So after the royal wedding, certainly Harry and Meghan were enjoying an all-time high. They were sort of riding this wave of positive publicity. Meghan had launched herself into royal duties admirably and incredibly capably. I mean, I think she blew us all away with how quickly she adapted what is actually an incredibly hard new role. But there was press speculation about the state of the relationship between the two duchesses, Kate and Meghan. I think more was made of the rift between Meghan and Kate in the beginning. But they came to live in this country. There were stories about Meghan's high-handedness. There were stories about how Meghan had made Kate cry in the lead up to the wedding. There was a, an altercation about little Charlotte's dress. So there was all of that, and that was kind of put down to this simmering between them. And also, I suspect there was a bit of competition between the pair of them. And I, I think that probably masked the real problem, which was a rift between the boys. Suggestions that there have been some cat fight between Kate and Meghan kind of clawing each other's eyes out are ridiculous, frankly. And I think what happened was that William and Harry weren't getting on particularly well. So then, inevitably, the two women kind of took their husband's side, as you would. There is smoke without fire. How true these stories are, possibly you take some of them with a big pinch of salt. And I certainly had been told by very reliable sources that the girls weren't the best of friends, weren't as close as perhaps they might have been. But actually, the real issue wasn't between Meghan and Kate, it was between William and Harry. The houses of Cambridge and Sussex joined forces for the Royal Foundation, set up to champion charitable causes. In the press, two couples were dubbed the Fab Four. There was a projection by the media to sort of create this Fab Four, these four glamorous, iconic royals. I think the press wanted this solid unit of the new Team Windsor to take the royal family forward into the next century. But that wasn't to be. So we could make a real impact. Someone actually asked them, have there been fights and disagreements? Working together as family, do you ever have disagreements about things? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Everyone looked so awkward and uncomfortable, and Kate was fitting in her hair, and Meghan looked... It was kind of quite embarrassing, because clearly there had been a lot of arguments. OK, the last thing you disagreed on, how do you resolve it? Uh, I can't remember, they come so fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, it's, but it's, is it resolved? We don't know. Oh, we don't know. Well, you're putting on a great show if it's not. <laughs> and I thought then, it is never going to work. We're stuck together for the rest of our lives, so... <laughs> <laughs> the question the media remained. Was there actually a rift between William and Harry? William has come to terms with the fact that his brother is now married, he, he's very much his own person, and basically stepped back and let Harry do his own thing. So I think the relationship has improved a lot, but it certainly went through a very, very difficult stage. And was there a rift? Absolutely. Tensions between royal siblings run through the family 
history. Growing up, the Queen and her sister, Princess Margaret, were very close, but a romance was to cause a rift between the sisters. Close. I mean, you know, it's almost as close as William and Harry in age and, and relationship. The rift, of course, happened when Margaret fell in love with a divorcee, Peter Townsend, who had been right-hand man to the king, her father. So those two aspects really threw a spanner in the works because Elizabeth, as queen, was head of the Church of England and she couldn't condone that marriage and, of course, it never happened. You could draw a parallel between the queen and Princess Margaret and William and Harry in the sense that one was the heir and the other you could call the spare. In the days of Margaret, she hadn't got any defined role and couldn't really pick one up, at least not one that the public recognised and respected. Yeah, you see it time and time again with the younger sister or the younger brother. What do they do? They really do have to create a role for themselves. I think in many ways the Queen can relate to William and Harry's relationship. She had an incredibly close relationship with her sister Margaret. They were just as tight as William and Harry, but that closeness also came under scrutiny. That was also tested by royal parameters, royal responsibility. I don't think Margaret ever really forgave her sister for not allowing her to marry Peter Townsend, and that caused a massive fracture in their relationship. It did cause a rift for a while, so the Queen can probably have some empathy and understanding of some of the tensions between William and Harry. So how will William and Harry's relationship stand at the test of time? And just how independent will Harry and Meghan choose to be? I can see Meghan and Harry saying, we've had enough. I can see them living in another country. Shortly after the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, rumours began to emerge about a rift between the duchesses. Stories of feuding filled the press. But some royal sources thought that the real rift could be between Princes William and Harry. Things got so bad between them that I was told by a very senior source close to both of the brothers that there was a period of time when they actually weren't talking to each other. Whilst on tour in Australia, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex announced Meghan was expecting a baby. It was quickly followed by the news that they would be moving from Kensington Palace, which had been home to the Fab Four, choosing Frogmore Cottage, a quieter and more private location on the Windsor Estate, away from the glare of London. But was Harry and Meghan's decision to move motivated by impending parenthood or a rift between the brothers? Harry lived in a relatively small house around the back of Kensington and palace called Nottingham Cottage. It wasn't big enough for a, a young, growing family. They were all living together in one big apartment like characters from Friends is, is ridiculous. Both Meghan and Harry felt that they wanted to just be their own people, establish their own court, establish their own household, and have a sense of freedom from the Cambridges. Of course, that move away from Kensington Palace to Frogmore Cottage only fueled the rumours of a rift, of a fallout, of the fact that they didn't get on and the Sussexes just wanted to be out of Kensington Palace and therefore wasn't this conclusive evidence. I was told that after the royal wedding, Meghan and Harry and Kate and William, despite living on the same complex at Kensington Palace, didn't see each other privately for a number of months. They just didn't see each other. The Queen offered them Frogmore Cottage, which is on the private Windsor estate. There are conflicting accounts as to why Meghan and Harry have gone to Frogmore Inn. Them say Wills and Kate wanted them out of the way because they were getting all the publicity. But then there's the other school of thought that Meghan and Harry wanted to go. The word is there's worry in the palace now, but now they're there, they will start creating their own thing that will become very difficult to control. Harry and Meghan moved into their new home. The world's press eagerly awaited news of their first child's imminent arrival. Details had been heavily guarded. A clear departure from the Cambridge's approach. When Meghan and Harry had their baby, everything was totally different to the way that Kate and William had done it, because William and Kate did it in a public way. They shared their joy with the public. It's very emotional. It's such a special time. I think any, any parents, I think, probably sort of um, know what this feeling feels like. So. Very special. Harry and Meghan didn't want to do that. He wanted to keep it totally private. I understand that to a certain degree, but the world wants to see 
and the world wants to know, and they are public figures. There was a lot of upset in the media that Harry and Meghan were snubbing tradition, that they were snubbing protocol, which they weren't. They were just doing things differently. It wasn't done in a very royal way or the way we'd come to expect. But then Harry's excuse was, well, I'm a private person, but you cannot be royal and be six in line to the throne and be a private person. I would think it might bother William a little bit because he might see the way that Harry and Meghan do things as being detrimental to the business of the monarchy as a whole. Just after the birth announcement was made by the palace, Harry came out and gave an impromptu um, press call. He came out and spoke to the TV cameras, taking actually even his closest advisers by surprise. I'm very excited to have been the most amazing experience I can ever um, possibly imagine. It is very tricky, that tightrope that the royals have to walk between what's private, what's public. Just because they're funded by the taxpayer, does that mean we should be entitled to all of their private life, some of their private life, just the births of their children, not the births of their children? Harry and Meghan made it quite clear that they wanted to do things differently. I think William, because of his position, the royal family and his children's position in the royal family. He accepts the public interest and accepts that you have to give a little. I think Harry thinks, I don't give a damn. Why should I have to give anything? I want my privacy and I want to protect the privacy of my wife and my child and therefore I will do what I want to do. And I think in the past when he would have listened to his brother's advice and he would have been counselled by his brother, now I don't think he listens to his brother. Rumours of a rift were fuelled by reports that it took a few days for William and Kate to meet the newest member of the royal family. It's interesting that, you know, when Archie was born, Wills and Kate didn't actually meet him for a whole week, which I think is, you know, that would fuel the rumours of a rift because I think that's quite odd, you know. Because no matter how tired Meghan was feeling or how unwell or whatever, you would still let the closest members of your family in on that because it's a, it's a joyous event. Why wouldn't you let members of your family in? Yeah, they maybe didn't see little Archie, but maybe at that time there was a problem of misunderstanding between the two. They weren't necessarily on the best of terms, but the royal family the same as anybody else. They're, the same. They're a very privileged family. They've got, they've got their certain manners and protocol, but the fact is it's just a family. That's all it is. And sometimes things aren't clicking. They may Let's give them a week. And by a week, you'll have been slowly getting back to normal. We all remember those days. And they may have done it because they were being kind. They may also have had work to do, engagements to be carried out, all sorts of things. In June 2019, Kensington Palace announced the Sussexes were to leave the Royal Foundation. They were splitting from William and Kate so they could focus on causes important to them. It media rumours of a rift between the couples, but some saw it as inevitable, given the princes' differing future roles. I think that if anyone has any doubts about the falling out between Harry and William, you only have to look at that forum back in February. You know, we've all got that same, that same passion to want to make a difference, um, but, you know, different, different opinions, and I think those opinions work really, really well. Take the charitable vehicle, how it was all going to be amazing, all these amazing things they did together. And just 16 months on, it's just ashes. We should have all seen it coming. Kate and William want to do things their way, and Meghan and Harry want to do things their way, and they could not meet in the middle. Working as, as family does have its challenges. Of course it does. Everybody here, the fact that everyone's laughing means that everybody <laughs> knows exactly what it's like. <laughs> when that split happened, I, as a commentator of nearly 30 years of the, on the Royal Family, wasn't surprised at all, because it sort of is a natural break. But what it was to be was this huge rift, a feud. The whole point was to harness the four of them as a strength, rather than having them all go off and do their different things, which of course is now what's happened. So what will the future hold for the royal brothers and their relationship? If this continues, I can see Meghan and Harry saying, we've had enough, that's it, we're off. I can see them 
in another country. I could see them sat on Oprah's couch, telling the world about their new life. The future for William is very clear. Uh, he will become the Prince of Wales, and then he will become the king. He doesn't really have a choice there. Harry's got much more latitude to live where he and Meghan want to live and to do what they want to do, whatever projects they want to do. When William is king, the focus will be on him and his family. And I think that's the time when Harry and Meghan and their children will not necessarily be required to do quite as much. I'm not saying he's going to disappear off, you know, the royal beat, but the focus, the media focus spotlight will be on King William and it'll be on George. It'll be interesting to see what happens when William becomes king and what the relationship will be like. I think it may be better because William is always going to be king. There's nothing going to change that and Harry will have accepted that a very long time ago. Also, William at that part will be top dog. <laughs> What he says goes. Um, so whatever Harry does or says, Will's in charge. End of story. I think there's a great amount of goodwill towards Harry and William. The brothers have always been incredibly close. And yes, there have been feuds and fallouts, but they have, I would say, an unbreakable bond. We want to see that bond of brotherhood. But this is time now for Harry to branch out and do his own thing and for William to be a king in waiting.
that she wanted the two boys to be treated equally. While Princess Diana tried to make sure there was no preferential treatment between her boys, some say other members of the royal family were not always so sensitive. When they would go to see the Queen Mother at Clarence House, the best sandwiches and the chocolatiest biscuits were always kept aside and offered first to William. Harry would have to wait. And, you know, Diana was aware of this, and I think that was why she always made a point of, of petting Harry, of just giving him that little bit of extra attention, because Harry knew that, that William was the number one son. But William and Harry's parents had difficulties of their own. By the time the boys were old enough to kind of get a feeling of what was going on, the household was pretty fraught between Charles and Diana. They would have heard raised voices. If they hadn't guessed, there were difficulties and Daddy was away. 